Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about measuring segments and angles. Uh, we're going to talk about the concept of congruency, and we're going to classify angles by their size. So, to begin, you may have in the past in grade school used a protractor, one of these jobbies, to measure angles. So you put this on the piece of paper on the line and then you figure it out kind of how many degrees it was using a protractor. Um, and that's one way to, to measure the, the size of an angle. And this would measure in degrees and maybe half a degree or tenths of a degree is what you have going on here with the, with the protractor. Okay. Um, we're going to be a little bit more precise uh, in our measurements, uh, we're probably not going to use a protractor this year, um, but angles can be measured in degrees and minutes and seconds. So 60 seconds, the smallest unit of measurement that we have right now, uh, makes up one minute. 60 minutes then makes up one degree, similar to um, what you might have on a clock, you know, where you've got hours, minutes, and seconds, we have in geometry, we have degrees, minutes, and seconds. So to give you an example of what this might look like, degrees, minutes, and seconds, we might have an angle that is 48 degrees, 39 minutes, and 24 seconds. And you will be asked to add and subtract, you know, angles and find out the total number of degrees and using degrees in minutes and seconds. So if I wanted to add like 16 degrees, uh, 24 minutes, and oh, we'll make this easy on me, 36 seconds, well, 24 and 36, that's 60 seconds, so that's going to be one degree. And this is going to be 64, so that's going to be four minutes, and that's going to add one degree, so I'm going to carry that over. So 49 and 16 uh, is 65, so I end up with 65 degrees and four minutes and no seconds. Doing subtraction, we'll probably get a little sneaky with you every once in a while and we might um, subtract something from 90 degrees. So if we had 90 degrees, it might be easier to use 89 degrees, 59 minutes and 60 seconds. That's the equivalent of 90 degrees, and that might make your adding and subtracting minutes and degrees and seconds a little bit easier. We can classify angles by size. Okay, so an angle that is acute, an acute angle, acute angle is not the angle you take to homecoming, you can take a cute girl to homecoming. Uh, but an acute angle is an angle that is more than zero degrees and less than 90. And an acute angle might look something like this. So that angle A might be an acute angle. Now we can't always trust uh, the look of the, the diagram. Um, you know, you'll have to go by the measure but uh, I didn't draw this the way I wanted to here. Um, but, you know, any angle that is less than 90 degrees and more than zero is going to be an acute angle. So probably something a little bit sharper like that is going to be acute. Right angles. Right angles are angles that are exactly 90 degrees. Okay, so a right angle a 90 degree angle and we'll denote our right angles with a box. So that box there indicates that uh, angle X is a right angle. 
So even if it looks like a right angle, or if it looks like it's 90 degrees, we don't know for sure. That angle could be 89 degrees, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. Not quite right. Okay, or it could be 90 degrees and one second, just a little bit more. Here, this is exactly 90 degrees. Got the right angle box that denotes that that is a right angle. Obtuse angles. Obtuse angles are angles whose measure is more than 90 degrees and less than 180. So something that's a little bit more wide open. Something like that might be considered an obtuse angle. So angle T here is an obtuse angle. It's more than 90, less than 180 degrees. And then finally, straight angles. Straight angles are exactly 180 degrees. That's going to be a straight line. Um, and I'll give you a vertex on this one. So X, Y, and Z. So angle X, Y, Z is a straight angle. That's exactly 180 degrees. Congruency. In order for things in geometry to be congruent, uh, two parameters need to be met. They're things that have both the same size and they have the same shape. So same size, we use the equal sign. Same shape, we use this this tilde, it's the similarity symbol. So if something has the same size and the same shape, we will deem them to be congruent. And the symbol we use for that is the tilde on top of the equal sign. So those, that's our congruent symbol. Okay. And measuring segments and angles. Congruent angles are two or more angles with the same measure. And we would denote that if we have two angles that have the same measure. That's angle A. That's angle B. Okay. They have the same shape. They also have the same size. So we could note that angle A is congruent to angle B, and that's how we would say it as well. Angle A is congruent to angle B. And we will also use tick marks to denote that the angles are congruent. So we might do something like this. Angle A is congruent to angle B, where the tick mark tells us that those angles are congruent. So angle C and angle D, if they have the same tick mark, then they're congruent. However, so angle C is congruent to angle D. They have the same tick marks, but so they're congruent. But we know for sure that angle C is not congruent to angle B. And we know that because they have different tick marks. So there's no way they can be congruent. They have, they, um, they have different tick marks. Now, if there's no tick mark, then we're not so sure. So, and we cannot assume angles are congruent. Congruent segments, those are two or more segments that have the same length. Again, like angles, we'll use tick marks if we have segment AB and segment CD. And if we give the same tick mark, something like that, those two are congruent. They don't look like they're congruent, but the tick marks tell us that they are. Okay, actually I skipped over the notation. So this is the tick marks. The tick marks tell us that angle or that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. The notation, we would say segment AB is our congruent symbol, is congruent to segment CD. Those are congruent. If we had a different tick mark, then they would not be congruent, okay? So if I said, uh, if I use that box there, okay? Now AB is not congruent to CD because I have different tick marks, okay? So the tick marks tell the story. 
So that wraps up this video. We've done a little introduction to classifying angles by size. We have acute angles, right angles, obtuse angles, and straight angles. We talked a little about congruency, things having the same size and the same shape. Uh, we talked about notation of congruent segments and congruent segments and congruent angles. And we talked about tick marks. If you have the same tick marks, then you know that those angles or segments are congruent. And with that, we will see you in class.